Hi, my name is Craig Tice. I'm the Superintendent of Schools of the Fayetteville Manlia Central School District. And we're with you here today to talk about the 2022-2023 proposed budget for the Fayetteville Manlia Central School District. Today, our Assistant Superintendent for Business Services, Mr. Bill Furlong and I, will walk you through the proposed budget, starting with revenues, talking about the state aid that the district will receive with the enacted New York State budget, the tax levy limit calculation, as well as our expenditures for the upcoming year, and special propositions like the bus proposition and the upcoming budget calendar, which will culminate in the vote on Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. Our general overview for the budget will involve the following. The proposed budget will maintain all existing student programs and services that are in alignment with the district's strategic plan. We will also be upgrading mental health supports for our students in light of coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic. The budget increase is also related to new debt coming on, especially with the completion of the Wellwood Capital Project that brought additional improvements to the High School Library Media Center and to a classroom addition at Enders Road. And then finally, the tax levy increase is projected to be at 1.8%. The resulting tax rates are expected to significantly decrease due to the expected growth in the tax base. The tax levy increase is also significantly below the tax levy limit calculation, which is at 2.9% that you will hear a little bit later. Thank you, Dr. Tice. The first thing we're going to review is the revenue budget. As an overview, the revenue budget is made up of three components. State aid revenue, which is based upon the enacted New York State budget for next year. The tax levy, which is the amount of money that we collect from all taxpayers within the district. The third part is other revenue, which are miscellaneous revenues that we receive during the course of the school year. This first slide is a comparison of the state aid that we will be receiving based upon the New York State budget for next year as compared to our budget for the current year. As you can see from this slide, our state aid is increasing by almost $3.5 million. The main increase is in the area of foundation aid, where we are increasing by a little bit more than $2.8 million. New York State has continued its commitment to fully fund the foundation aid formula and therefore we're receiving an additional $2.8 in foundation aid. The tax levy limit in education law is the total amount that we can raise taxes. That limit is a calculation based on multiple factors. The first factor is the consumer price index. While the consumer price index measured inflation, and that inflation was 4.7% in the last year, we are capped at a 2% increase by law. In addition, we get an increase from what's called the taxable growth factor. That growth factor is based upon real brick and mortar growth or new construction within our school district. The third part is the capital exclusion. This is based upon the difference between debt expense and state aid as a result of recently completed building projects. Those building projects were voter approved in the past and therefore we can increase the levy based upon that capital exclusion. While the resulting tax levy limit is 2.9% in this next year, the tax levy necessary to balance the budget is 1.8%. The resulting tax levy is $67,521,063, which is an increase of almost $1.2 million over the current year. It's important to note that while the tax levy is increasing, tax rates don't necessarily increase by the same amount. In fact, in the last four years, you can see that the tax levy increase has actually resulted in a tax rate decrease due to growth in the tax base. We again expect this next year that the tax rate will significantly decrease because of increasing assessments throughout the school district. To highlight this concept, we are showing an example here of a taxpayer impact of a 13% increase in their assessment. Now this example is in the town of Manlius. 
So we start with a $100,000 taxable home, and because of their increase in assessment by 13%, their new taxable value will be $113,000. While the tax levy is increasing 1.8% due to the entire growth in the tax base within the school district, the tax rate will be expected to decrease by 11 and a quarter percent. If we look at the actual tax bill calculations for the current school year and next school year, you can see that the increase is $7.26 on this $113,000 taxable value home, or a percentage increase of 0.29%. One other point to note is that while the town of Manlius and the town of DeWitt reassess every year, the town of Poppy does not. This next slide shows an example of what's happening in the town of Pompey for next year. Now because the town of Pompey does not reassess every year, their taxable value will remain the same at $100,000. So while the tax levy is increasing by 1.8%, once again due to growth in the tax base, the tax rate in the town of Pompey is increasing by 1.27%. If we look at a comparison of the two tax bills, for one for the current year and one for next year, you can see that the tax bill increase is $36.03, or 1.27% on that $100,000 property. It is important to note that the equalization rate for the town of Pompey will be reduced from 89% to 78%, indicating that the actual fair market value for that $100,000 home is actually $128,205. The reason for the higher tax rate in the town of Pompey is to equalize the taxable value with what the fair market value is within that town. The third category of revenues is miscellaneous revenues. This is a listing of all other revenues by category and the changes between the current budget year and the proposed budget for next year. You can see that the overall increase in miscellaneous revenues is up almost $825,000. There are several significant increases. One is in the area of interest income. Since interest rates are rising, we believe that interest income will also increase over the next school year. In addition, we are uh, currently experiencing higher revenue in the area of Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement which have been reflected in the budget for next year. We are also using a debt service reserve and additional appropriated fund balance to help reduce the burden on taxpayers. We are now gonna to switch to the expenditure side of the budget. And as Dr. Tice mentioned before, the proposed budget includes funding to support the district's strategic plan, including additional funding for mental health services for our students. The payroll is based upon proposed staffing and existing collective bargaining agreements, as well as projected changes to contracts that are currently under negotiation. We are also seeing cost increases in the areas of health insurance and certain retirement system costs. Inflation, which people are seeing in their normal personal lives, is also impacting our budget for next year. In addition, we are increasing the budgetary appropriation for capital transfer building projects. These next several slides break our budget down into what's called the three-part format. The first part is the instructional program. As you can see, instructional salaries make up the large majority of the increase on this slide. When we look at the remainder of the instructional program, you can see increases in the areas of special education, and you can also see increases in the area of guidance, health services, social worker, and psychologists that are directly related to the increase in mental health services that we offer our students. Another line item to point out that is directly related to inflation is the area of transportation. We are seeing a dramatic increase in the price that we're paying for a gallon of diesel fuel. The overall increase in the instructional program area is almost $2.6 million. The second part of the three-part budget is the administrative budget. And you can see that there's an increase of slightly less than $140,000. This represents about a 2.3% increase over the current year. The capital portion of the budget is the third part of the three-part budget format. As you can see, there are some significant changes from the current year budget. 
Uh, one important item to note is the transfer to capital line. The transfer to capital budget is a budgetary appropriation that is used to fund limited scope building projects. The $1.5 million included in this next year's budget is intended to create a more secure entrance at the Enders Road Elementary School. It will also be used for security upgrades at both the Enders Road Elementary and Fayetteville Elementary buildings and will also be used to improve ventilation at Fayetteville Elementary, including the addition of air conditioning. This project, pending voter and state education department approval, this project will not begin until June 2023 and is expected to be completed in September of 2023. This project will qualify for building aid and 81.1% of the cost will be covered by New York State. The last part of the expenditure budget is employee benefits. Since this is a significant cost to the district, we like to break this out. And you can see here the different employee benefit costs that we incur as a school district. The largest single cost increase is in the area of health insurance. Health insurance premiums are expected to increase by 6% this next year. The total budget is increasing by $5.5 million or 5.9%. However, if you take out the increases in the areas of special education, capital transfer, and the new debt from recently completed building projects, the budget is a more reasonable 3.4% increase. In summary, the proposed budget for next year is increasing due to contractual and inflationary cost increases, new debt from com recently completed building projects, an increase in the budgetary appropriation for capital construction and increased costs in the area of special education. State aid is increasing significantly as a result of the New York State fully funding the foundation aid formula. The result is a tax levy increase of 1.8%, but we fully expect the tax rates will be significantly decreasing in this next year, with the exception of the town of Pompey. Town of Pompey is expected to increase by 1.27%. It is important to note that there are currently no plans to make any reductions to any of the educational programs that we offer to our students. Separate and distinct from our proposed budget for this next year is a universal pre-K program. New York State has made available over 712,000 to fund a universal pre-K program here at the Fayetteville Manly Central School District. This program would service 132 children. The program would be for four-year-olds. While the district currently does not have enough space to house this program, we have issued requests for proposals from outside entities to operate the program, and the Board of Education has awarded contracts to two entities within our school district. This program is expected to begin in September 2022. A separate proposition on the ballot this year is for the purchase of six school buses to replace some of our aging school bus fleet. The total cost of this purchase is $886,070. This purchase will be funded through a borrowing that will be paid back over a five-year period. This purchase is also eligible for state transportation aid and will be reimbursed at 74.9%. Going forward, the budget hearing will be on Monday May 9th at 6 p.m. in the Eagle Hill Auditorium. I would like to invite you to attend to learn more about the budget at that time or to ask any questions that you may have that need further explanation. I also encourage you to use the Let's Talk communication portal that's available on our website. Mr. Furlong and I will be able to respond to your specific questions about the proposed budget. And then finally, I encourage you to vote on Tuesday, May 17th, which is a universal voting date for all central school districts in New York State. Thank you for your attention.